Good evening class. Hello everyone and welcome to my class on the Unacademy YouTube live channel. So today we are going to continue our discussion on the consonants. So in the afternoon today I had a class on the first 12 sounds of the consonants and we discussed in detail each of these sounds and also tried to figure out if there are any types of errors that could happen while doing these sounds but it doesn't end there and we've got few more sounds left before we can complete um, getting to know about all the different sounds of consonants i've earlier done a class on monophthongs that is the pure sound uh, mo single sounds and another one on diphthongs now these two one monophthong which consists of 12 sounds diphthongs which consist of eight sounds and consonants which consist of 24 sounds they all come to an end today with the last class on the pronunciation made easy phonemic chart but uh, don't be like you know don't worry i will be doing a special class another youtube class on the queries that you've had during these sessions on pronunciation to get you uh, to know about pronunciation better clear all your doubts and queries before we begin let me tell you that my code is let's go back and choose a colored pen so now let me tell you that my code is be trainers so if you subscribe with this code on the an academy website on the an academy platform you will be getting a 10 percent off now an academy provides uh, to its uh, customers to its consumers to the people who watch it different types of facilities in terms of learning and in terms of retaining your learning process and getting to know more about um, the classes the different types of teaching so what are the benefits that you could avail of if you subscribe to the an academy website the first thing is you would have access to amazing live content creators in relation to the different types of uh, subjects that you would be interested in i personally teach ielts and uh, i am an expert in ielts and most of my students who are more than 5000 in numbers uh, the ones who have taught for so many years they've gone on to achieve amazing scores in both academic and general training module now it's very very important to think uh, to, uh, to understand that uh, when it comes to uh, getting marks for ILTS practice and looking at the strategies is very very important so an academy specifically provides you um, an opportunity to do the classes together with the experts in these fields and also practice all the techniques and strategies that are going to, that are taught there you also get an opportunity to watch the recorded videos recorded uh, classes of these educators now it doesn't have to be necessarily from the given time span that you've joined you could watch any video by any of these educators in order to enhance your knowledge about both language grammar um, ilts and anything else that you would be interested in so do not waste time subscribe to the an academy platform immediately i will share the different types of subscription with you but before we do that let me tell you a little more, bit more about myself i am reefa zahir and the founder of british english trainers british english trainers is my institute which i started after working with the British Council for more than 10 years, where I worked in the capacity of an ILTS administrator, that means I conducted IELTS all over East India and then went on to do ILTS teaching and training for both tutors and students. The tutors who I trained went on to train other tutors, other t uh, students. So that's it about uh, my background. I've completed my master's in English literature and have done my CELTA from Cambridge University. And let me share the different types of subscriptions with all of you. If you uh, guys, I would like every one of you to uh, leave in a high message. 
so that I know you are a part of the class right now and we can connect accordingly. Let me see if I can see any one of you in the class. Hi, Pachu. So I can see that we've got Pachu in the class and uh, now before I start talking to all of you, let me share the different subscriptions with you. Uh, we at, um, at Unacademy, there are different types of subscriptions ranging from the one month subscription, a subscription which is for 2700 to uh, the three months to the six months to the 12 to the 24 months you can clearly see that uh, without even without you using my subscription right out here you already get a 17 percent off on 8100 which now becomes 6750 on 6750 you can use my subscriber code be trainers and get a 10 percent off this referral code will help you get a further 10% discount on this total amount. So what are you waiting for? Do not delay and join the Unacademy family and become a part of the whole learning process where the whole uh, purpose of all the tutors are to help you crack the examination and also to enhance your learning experience. Now I, I'm going to check and see if I can see any one of you in the page right now, in the channel right now, so that I can look at your questions and then accordingly do the class. Hello, everyone. I hope all of you can see me guys let me know if you can see me so that we can take this discussion further and uh, let me check and see whether we are on the same page and uh, whether you can see me yes you should be able to see me so let's begin now, like I do in every class, I'm going to now start with the band descriptors. Now, uh, the IELTS speaking and writing examination have certain, uh, has certain parameters on the basis of which you are marked in your IELTS examination. So we've got vocabulary. Let me go back right here. So there is vocabulary which uh, comprises of 25% of the total marking uh, system, followed by grammar, followed by fluency and coherence. It's very important to know that both fluency and coherence are uh, correlated to pronunciation because it affects our fluency also. So it counts for much more than 25% because the more you hesitate, the more your pronunciation gets affected and because of which it may lead to you losing scores in your pronunciation and fluency. Guys, remember, there are certain strategies that need to be followed. I will be doing a special class, a YouTube class on understanding band descriptors, where you will be able to determine the criteria on the basis of which uh, marking happens in both speaking and writing. Now, let's have a look at what a phonemic chart is. All right. Now, the phonemic chart, if you look at this chart, uh, firstly, I would like to tell you that it is a transcription of the sounds of a word or phrase using phonemic symbols from the International Phonetic Alphabet. The phonemic chart consists of 44 sounds of spoken English. It consists of 12 monophthongs and 8 diphthongs and 24 consonants. I'll be showing all of you these in the sheet, uh, the earlier slide to you, so that you are in a better position to understand what these mean and what these are. The phonemes, uh, which are 
the different phonemic, uh, the sounds in the phonemic chart are the smallest units of sounds in a language. If a phoneme is changed, the word may change. Example, change the L sound in LAC to a B and the word changes to back. Phonemic symbols are the symbols used to represent individual phoneme sounds in, in the transcription. So for example, this particular symbol out here, which looks like a J, is actually for the sound year. Yes, you heard it right. It is for the sound year. In Hindi, which is written like this, and in Bengali, which is written like this. In different languages, it could be in different phonemic, in different scripts. But uh, these are the two, the ones which I know. And so I've put it down on the sheet for you. Now let's move ahead and have a look at uh, the phoneme sounds again, the phonemes. So these are the monophthongs. There are 12, so 12 of these. And it's very important to know that all 12 of these are pure vowels. Monophthongs and diphthongs are part of the vowel family. Monophthong is a pure vowel and definitely uh, is in relation to a single sound. Diphthongs are du dual sounds or double sounds. And the one sound in this sound phoneme originates in the mouth, the tongue, and the other sound in the voice apparatus, which could be above on the top portion of the throat or below the throat. I'll give you an example. For a sound like ear, the first one right here, so you've got E, E, E originates here, E originates here. So it's easier for you to understand which one is, uh, you know, where the sound is originating. And that is the reason why these are double sounds. Today, in, uh, in the evening, I've already done some of the consonants. The consonants are nothing but everything else which is not a vowel. And we've got 24 of these. In the consonant family, there are certain voiced, unvoiced, and there are other bifurcations there. We are going to look into the more difficult concepts in a class later on in the month of February. February. And uh, right now, we are going to look into the remaining part of the consonants that wasn't done in an earlier class today. And at the end, I'm going to revise all of these with you once again. Now let's move ahead. The word consonant comes from the Latin oblique stem consonans. So, which means sounding together, letter. A calc of Greek symphonon, plural symphona. In articulate, articulatory phonetics, a consonant is a speech sound that is articulated with complete or partial closure of the vocal tract. Examples are per pronounced with the lips, t, pronounced with the front of the tongue, k, pronounced with the back of the tongue, h, pronounced in the throat, th, and s, pronounced by forcing air through a narrow channel, which is called fricatives, and which I'm going to describe, uh, which I'm going to make it easier for you to understand in a later class. And m and n, which have air flowing through the nose, which are nasal sounds, which in fact has a strong nasal one in the n one. Contrasting with consonants are the vowels. Now let's move ahead and begin the, vowel, the consonant journey for the remaining sounds. Now let me check and see if there's anyone in the class right now. Okay, we've got a hi Anvesha, hi Pachu. Yes, uh, Pachu, I've had a look at your message. And now we are going to start with the, with the other sounds right now. So we've got the B. Look at my lips now. 
So I'm going to start off with the sounds and I would want you to focus on my lips movement and uh, the way I would uh, change my facial expressions and the mouth movements. So let's begin. So we've got the b, 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 v, v, v. You'll notice that this is a major error point for a lot of students who do the pronunciation. They tend to, um, you know, pronounce the b words, uh, the w words with the b sound. I'm going to make this whole process easier for you to understand. So look at my mouth and see how I pronounce these words. Better, better, t. We've done in an earlier class again. Better, better. Big, boyfriend, baggage. Now, the same thing with the word sound. Victory, vision, review, live. You can see my lower lip going up. So you can see the lip movement. Again, better, big, boyfriend, baggage. Victory, vision, review, live. I hope... The B and word clarification is absolutely clear to all of you. Now, Anvesha, Pachu and every anyone else who's there in the class right now, can you give me one word each for B and W? Guys, I'm waiting for the words. Okay, since I haven't got the words, I'm going to move ahead and I'm going to do the next set of sounds with you. So, Anvesha has given us a break. Uh, she hasn't necessarily given us a break, but she, she has given us the word break. So, this is for Anvesha. Thank you, Anvesha. She's also given us, uh, is that for us, brew? Very good. Bosch. Excellent, Anvesha. So, Urvashi has given us boring. Okay, amazing. Now, let's move on and have a look at the next sound. Now, the reason why I put the word sound again for you is to show you the difference between the word. Now, look at my lips. V and W. W. V, V, V. So, wise, that means a bad thing, wise. Yes, Pachu, bitter. So, we've got wise, wise. You can see in V, my lower lip goes down and in W, my lips go side. So, we've got wise, wise. V, V. So we go V, 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 wise, 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 wise. So you can see how the mouth moves. Of course, when you're speaking in speed, uh, you wouldn't be making all these facial expressions, but uh, it would be in a lighter manner so that it's not so visible to the audience before you. But at least you learn how to move your mouths accordingly and correctly. Similarly, wine, wine. You see, uh, the moment you do a correct mouth uh, movement, the whole meaning of the sound changes in the sense it sounds uh, different. If you close your eyes and listen to what I'm saying right now, you'll be able to determine this in a better manner. Let me show this to you. Wine, 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 wine. Right there for you. I hope that's absolutely clear to each one of you. So you've got whale, 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 whale. So one is uh, the covering uh, that's before your face that covers your head. And the other is to beat your chest and cry. The only way you can perfect this and sound absolutely amazing when you use both the V sound 
and the W sound is when you make the correct mouth movement. So, let's understand this in a better manner now. V. Once again, vice, wise. V, we. Vine, wine. Veil, veil. I hope that's absolutely clear to you. And I would like, uh, ma'am, can wicked go worry? Yes, of course, yes. Wicked and worry. Now, I would want you to come up with a word which will go, which looks the same as, uh, you know, looks slightly similar like wise and wise and which you can put into V and W. Let's see if you can come up with that. Something like wine, wine, veil, veil. I look forward to that response from you guys. And... Um, now I'll move forward. So you've got year. Now this is very interesting. Important to know. Very good Anvesha. Really like this. So view. Uh, Urvashi both want and want. Come under the W category. You could do. I think this is an amazing one. We could do went, want. Went, want. So again, that also falls good there. Now let's see if there's someone else who's got uh, a response. Otherwise, let's move ahead. So three, two, one. Let's move ahead. Now, my very favorite sound and very favorite symbol, the J symbol, but the year sound. This is such a complicated symbol for a lot of students to understand because the moment they see the J symbol, they think it is in relation to uh, the J sound. It isn't the J sound. The sound is Y. It's a simple Y sound with the phonemic script showing J as a symbol. So do not get confused out there and stick to what you are doing and stick to whatever is being said. So this sound is nothing but the year sound. Or you could say year sound. Yummy. Yes. Eulatide. You onion. So you can see it's onion. Your. So Anvesha, would you like to give me another word out here with a year? Or Urvashi or Pachu. Very good, Urvashi. Yellow. Anvesha, your, I've written that. Good, Urvashi. Yummy, yummy is mentioned. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll now move on to the next sound because we also have to do a revision of this, the other consonant sounds. Then you've got a ch. Now, again, the symbol is so misleading. It's got a T and it's got an integration sign. But this has nothing to do with both T and an F or an integration sign. The sound is ch. Church. Ch. Church. Cheese. Channel. Champion. Torture. Yes. So isn't that amazing? It looks different. But the sound is J. Can you give me more words with this sound? J. Creature. Amazing. Creature. Yes, Anvishan. Very good. Ch. And of course, after the Ch, you'll have an A uh out there. Creature. Agriculture. Very good. Good guys. Agriculture. That spelling of agriculture looks like it's wrong. We'll just re uh, delete that. So I'm going to write agriculture for you 
excellent vulture very good urvashi stretcher excellent i think guys this is amazing you've come up with some lovely words here so that's great now let's move on to the next sound sir and ch again another area where students make a lot of errors when it comes to sir and ch you'll notice that a lot of students have a huge difficulty in pronouncing the sh sound clearly i'm going to make things easy for you what you need to do is just follow my mouth movement sir so so s e w is pronounced as so sit sign same situation 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 british and american this is the sh sound sound sh shampoo wash wish shell shoe sh very good anvesha even the word yesterday s u r e is also pronounced as sh so you can very clearly see pronunciation of a word is not completely correlated to the spelling you would have to know the pronunciation separately in order to understand it and that's the reason why i am encourage all my students to go online follow the cambridge online dictionary and just not randomly look at any other dictionary or a phonemic uh, you know sounds on the websites yes pachu she so that's there and so amazing so we've got shallow shampoo and uh, what else ash so we've got all these words here and it's amazing to know that all these words uh, these sounds uh, are so different when you look at them but uh, the symbols are so different but the sound is just a simple sh sure sound now let's look at another difficult sound that most of my students face and that is the d and the d sound i've just done these sound the d sound in the evening but i'm going to repeat it just to show you the comparison between d and d so d is a very strong one d d d you can see the d the stress is in the middle of your tongue more towards the front whereas d comes from right here so you've got dinner drum donkey dog dessert desert so if you've got dessert the sweet that we eat and desert the desert then you've got the there those there okay we've got this word again so i'll make this into this so you can see this is d and this is the there those this these weather so you can see this d is not the the d is different from the d this d is very very soft yes pachu the dentist would come here and the would come here so the simple the would also come here i hope that's absolutely clear to all of you now we'll move ahead and look at the next set of sounds so the next set of sound clearly is a very simple sound looks difficult again this is nothing but the th sound think theta th thought thanks theater throw can you give me another word with th in fact i'll put that here rather is absolutely right and we had a draw thing very good anvesha excellent right there thanks thanks we've already got there okay i'll give you a thank okay now with the th now we are going to move to the r sound so r rose rice rinse red romance the r sound is very simple there's nothing uh, more to say here apart from the fact 
that the British don't roll their tongue, especially if the ro is towards the end of a word, like in the sense uh, teacher, then the ro gets pronounced as a, uh, the schwa sound. So it becomes teacher in the case of the uh, British pronunciation. But in the case of Americans, uh, they roll the tongue. So teacher for British would become teacher, r, teacher. So it becomes r. So it's very important to understand that the British don't roll the tongues and the Americans roll the tongues. And both are unique and well accepted all around the world. It's just the difference in pronunciation. All right. So now let's move ahead. Yes, Anvesha has given us roller. Okay, now the last of the series here. And after this, we go into practicing the sounds that we've done earlier. So, her, honey, hello, hi, home, happiness. The sound her, if you uh, look up the phonemic chart, is pronounced but the sound is H, right? So you have to focus on that. Letter, L, letter, liver, lose. So this is the past uh, simple lose. Just a second. I think it's the present simple. I'm so sorry about that. If we lose someone, uh, then uh, we suffer a lot of pain in our life. So this lose means to uh, a loss of somebody close to you. This lose, especially out here, means L O S C. That means a, a cloth, a cloth not being tight, not tight. So that's the difference between these two words, and you have to be careful. So we've got hostel, we've got highness, absolutely there. So like I said, lose. I don't want to lose you. So it's the in the infinitive and L W O S C. It's uh, it's tight loose. These clothes are loose for me. So it's an adjective. All right. So very important to understand that you do not uh, make errors like these, and you know which one is which one. Now let's revise. Let's do a quick review of each one of these. So, early in the day, we did bear and der, which I've already covered right now for you. So, I won't be doing this, but I'll definitely do the fur and ger. Again, they don't sound exactly the way I am pronouncing them here, because in the phonemic charts, it they come just as... They come like this, just with a certain vibration. But actually, the sound definitely is fur and ger. So, it's important to understand... The feather, fellow, feature, friend, phone, guitar, god, gap, guest, gullible. So all, so the one is the first sound and the other is the ger sound. Now let's move ahead and have a look at the ker and the per sound. One is ker. So just because the sound is ker doesn't mean that the letter also has to be ker. The classic example of which is cute, climb. So if you can think of one, uh, another word with the C spelling, but the K sound, it would be really nice. Both Pachu, Anvesha, uh, Urvashi, would you like to give it a try? Cost, very good, Anvesha. Anvesha has written cost twice. I can see that there. Okay. So while I wait for your answers, I'm going to move to the per sound. Cozy. Very good, Urvashi. And my favorite one is carrot. Uh, no, Pachu. Chick would be here. Chick. Chia. I'll show you where chick would be. Or chicken. Chick is here, Pachu. C-H-I-C-K. Or chicken. Alright. 
So don't make that error. Yes, Anvesha Crow it is. Now, let's have a look at per, pigeon, pretty, pen, pain. Again, pigeon, pretty, pen, pain. Very important again to understand the difference between these two sounds. Um, the k sound and the c sound, not the per. Uh, the k sound, even with the spelling c, is the k sound because, like I mentioned earlier, there is no difference. Uh, in fact, uh, spelling is not a determining factor of, for pronunciation. So you need to be aware of that. Yes, Anvesha, Crow it is, and I think I've mentioned it here. Now, the M and T. M, M, look at my mouth. Met, mistake. Mellow, miser. M, M. Again, met, mistake. Mellow, miser. T, 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 tuition, telephone. Teacher, so you need to understand that the ter comes with a little bit of a vibration. If you want to sound really good and have a neutral accent, which not only sounds well but is also easy to express, do not forget to look at each of these sounds individually, replay this YouTube video, and practice each of these sounds. It's important to understand that having a neutral accent is what each one of us should aim for. It's not important to have an American or a British accent. Once you go to these countries, you automatically adopt these. But it's more important to have an accent which is uh, easier for everyone to understand. So that means have a good pronunciation. Yes, posture. Yes, patient. Good. M, T, T, tuition, telephone, teacher. All right. Now, let's move ahead and have a look at N and N. New, net, funny, not, nephew. As easy as that, N is slightly nasal, not very nasal. N is very nasal and it normally is in the middle of a word and is followed by a consonant mostly. And that is the reason why, um, you know, sometimes it's difficult to pronounce the word after that or that word properly and there's a word for it which I will discuss in my later classes for pronunciation but not always because in this word like no you know that there's a wall behind it wing sing pink ring so you can see it's not exactly like new but the no is very clear but in ring it gets strongly you know, taken over by the girls. So, so it sounds almost like they are both together. There's a pretty pigeon in the pan. The pretty pigeon is in pain. Very good, Pachu. So that's a tongue twister right there. Master. Yes. And that was for an earlier word. Now, again, a quick revision of this sound. J, Z, here. Yeah. I've done it again. Uh, I'm doing it again. I did it in the class earlier today. J is your normal J sound. Jug. But you, this is especially for you. I'm revising this once again so that you can pick up the nuances. J. Jug. Jam. Jealous. Giraffe. This is the normal J. The actual J sound. The, after that comes the Z. Z. The vibration is on the tip of your tongue. Zoom, zap, wizard, zipper, xerox, xylophone. Yes, Pacho, M and N are nasal sounds. Now, excuse me, the main problem comes with the Z sound. If you look at my mouth, you can see I say Z with my lower lip coming out. So it's important that whenever you use this word, you say treasure. So you automatically your lower lip comes out. So try to follow these strategies so that you, uh, you are able to pronounce each of these words clearly. Treasure, leisure, division, measure. Again, treasure, leisure, division, measure. So right there are the 
three sounds divided equally for you to understand. So with this, I would like to end my class today. Uh, before I end, my referral code is BE Trainers. If you subscribe with this code on the An Academy website, you will be getting a 10% off. And currently, I'm doing a course on grammar. The things that are still left in that course are tenses and articles and adverbs and a doubt class. So I would say don't miss the opportunity to come and do grammar in detail. All the students who've attended these classes have benefited hugely by it. And uh, I would like to also tell, share with you another class that I'm doing right now. And this class is going to be, uh, is on, not going to be, is on essay writing. So I'm currently doing this class at 6 p.m. every day. We've got three more essays left. So we've got uh, the both the views essay, the advantage, disadvantage and the two part essay and a doubt class left. So I would suggest come for my classes on the An Academy website and not only practice the tips and strategies, but also learn how to write each one of these in detail. And uh, I would say um, in our classes, not only do we not only do we do uh, tips, strategies, we write the essays together. I check the essays in the class and uh, let my students know what kind of errors they are making and guide them to do it in a much better manner. Another thing, to all those people who are not, uh, who haven't subscribed to the An Academy platform, you will be able to see these classes only if you are subscribers to the channel. The ones who are not, I would request you to do one very important thing that is come and experience a special class conducted by me and get to see how educators like me and others teach all of you in the classes. If you like these classes, go ahead and then subscribe to the An Academy website. All right. Now, with that, I th I'll take you back to the first page and then do a quick review of whatever we've covered in these six lessons. I started off with, with the phonemic script journey with uh, introducing all the students to the phonemes and the phonemic script. Our first class on pronunciation covered the different types of pronunciation techniques. That was the first one that I had done for my students. Post that, I picked up monophthongs. Monophthongs, like I said, are single sounds. And after that, uh, the monophthongs classes were divided into two classes. Post that, we did diphthongs. The diphthongs class was just one class. So that was pronunciation made easy part four. And today, I've done pronunciation made easy part five and part six. And in these classes, my students, uh, everyone who's watched will get to know how I've covered the whole pronunciation, the whole phonemic chart journey. So if you've got any doubts, watch my series, Pronunciation Made Easy 1 to 6 to understand the phonemic chart better. Now, we, with that, we come to the end of the class. And uh, before I end, I'm going to have a look at the question section and I'll respond to the questions that have been put forward by my students. Let's see what questions we have. Firstly, I would like to congratulate Anvesha, Pachu, Urveshi for coming up with all these uh, answers in such a short span of time because it's, like I said, it's not easy at all. And we are teachers and tutors who've been training for years. So uh, for us, it's easier to come up with these words. But for my students, I would like to congratulate to you for coming up with these words so fast during the class. Now, Pachu, you've asked to do a minimal pairs for short class. Definitely, I'll take note of it. And uh, you've also asked uh, certain questions. Pachu, what I'm going to do is, towards the end of the pronunciation series, I am going to do a special uh, YouTube class on all the queries that you've had in the pronunciation classes. So don't miss that out. Thank you, Urvashi, uh, for your feedback. 
it's uh, it's really valuable to receive feedback from my um, viewers from people who watch these videos and get to learn the maximum out of it and i hope each one of you who has watched these videos these series has gained a lot out of it so any more questions there if you've got any more questions there in regard to today's class you can ask me thank you urveshi so with that uh, thank you everyone for being such lovely students today and uh, i look forward to seeing you all in my other youtube classes to know what classes i would be doing please subscribe to the an academy channel on the youtube uh, on the youtube app or on youtube to know about the latest um, you know classes that are taking place and the latest series that uh, do take place on the platform all right so i would like to end the class now and uh, the next class that we are going to do in the pronunciation series is going to cover the other aspects of pronunciation and we are going to have a query class a doubt class where each one of you who has had even a vague doubt about these classes can uh, you know put forward the questions and i'll look into each aspect of it and give you the answers accordingly so good night and goodbye and uh, happy learning and pronounce uh, and to, in order to become good orators good speakers get your pronunciation right